Hey guys, it is time for our next bonus session. This is the final session for Tuesday and it's going to be great. We have the sponsor of this segment is the inventor of the Platypod. Now, I want you to know something really important and I heard Kuna talking about this in his session and this has always been my experience. I came from traditional photography and I've got all kinds of camera gear and uh, I've reviewed all kinds of camera gear over the years and what I can tell you is it really doesn't matter which camera you're using, one of the really important things is to hold your camera steady. Yes, I agree, a lot of cameras, uh, newer lenses, and certainly the iPhone camera, the newest version of, of the iPhone cameras, do a good job of compensating for the human hand shaking just a little bit, or even walking, you know, it smooths out things for video. But honestly, if you want great shots, time exposure, and things like that, you need a tripod. And people just don't carry a big tripod with them, especially when we're iPhone photographers. So the best tripod, honestly, is the one you have with you. And these platypods that, that you'll see in just a minute, the platypods are awesome because they are compact. You can carry them with you and they act as your tripod. They're the best tripod alternative I've ever used. And I carry them with me all the time. There's one in my car, I carry them with me all the time. That's enough from me. What I want to tell you though is this session is sponsored by Platypod. They are the, the company that put this all together, but it's not just about Platypods. It's about getting the most from your camera. So the best tripod is the tripod you have with you. And I have my Platypods with me all the time. And the guy that invented the Platypod and a whole lot of other cool gear is named Larry Tiefenbrun. He's actually a doctor. Dr. Tiefenbrun is with us. And Dr. T, I'm going to hand off to you as we get started on this next hour of great learning about tethered shooting using iPhones. Well, Larry, thank you for that nice introduction. And gosh, I am so excited to be here today. I'm always excited to be at a Kelby One conference, but today especially because we have a very different topic that I want to talk to you about. And it might have been touched on a little bit by some of the other speakers, but I guarantee you're going to get some tips and tricks today about the iPhone platypods and remote photography. And what is remote photography? Well, you're about to find out how iPhones can be involved with remote triggering of your iPhone from an Apple Watch. I know Scott Kelby mentioned that this morning, but Larry's going to do a much more deep dive into all the tips and tricks that you can do with your Apple Watch. To And if you don't have one yet, sorry, you're probably going to end up buying one right after this talk because Larry's going to give you some amazing tips. He taught me things that I'd never known uh, when we were in our practice session for this. So, And yes, we are live. Larry, explain to people what they can do in the chat here because we will respond. Yes. Uh, in fact, there are a lot of platypod um, people that are that are very knowledgeable about the entire collection of Platypod offerings. And so as you're watching this, if you put questions in either the chat or the Q&A, uh, we're gonna keep track of those. And a lot of times our people, our staffers are gonna be able to tell you what the answer is if it's something really short or brief. But if something is presented, if I teach something, if Larry T teaches something, and you have a specific question about it that other people can't answer, that's okay because they're gonna send those to me here, and then as we're closing out the session at the end of the hour, then Larry T and I are gonna answer some of your specific questions that are still unanswered. So no matter what questions you come up with, we hopefully will be able to help you out. So uh, thank you very much, Larry. And yes, please feel free to put, to put the questions through. The next topic after the, uh, the Apple Watch, we'll also be talking about using your iPhone as a monitor and a trigger for your DSLR or mirrorless camera. 
we're going to use a tool today. I'll introduce a tool called the Arsenal 2 Pro. Uh, there are several other things like this that'll do the same thing. So we'll get into that. We're going to talk about off-camera lighting. So we'll discuss strobe lighting. And I know Dave Williams touched on that this morning as well. And we're going to talk about using continuous lights together with platypods, your camera, your iPhone, loads of fun stuff. So please don't go away. If you're hungry, grab something to eat and keep watching. And we hope you'll learn some interesting things. And if you stick around to the very end, then we're going to have a top secret sneak peek at a new product that we're coming out with next month on Kickstarter. I'll be coming down April 26 to be on Scott Kelby's The Grid. And if you've never watched The Grid before, you absolutely should. It's available on podcast, on YouTube, but it will be uh, live on April 26, 1 p.m., and we will launch our Kickstarter. So stick around to the end. We'll show you that. We'll also talk about some really cool deals that we have with Platypod for those of you who are on Kelby One watching this live. One last thing. Some of you may see this show on YouTube. Down the line, we will probably pu publish this on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. And please, if you like what we're doing, hit the like button, pound on subscribe. It really helps us and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you'll be able to see many of the talks that I've given on Kelby One on various topics uh, relating to Platypod. Dr. Uh, T, so why, let's, wait, wait real quick. You brought, up, you brought up that you have a YouTube channel. And I want to encourage people, as we go through this presentation, you're going to be showing a lot of really cool gear that, that is going to be a very first time revelation to a lot of our viewers that if they haven't been to any of these Kelby conferences before, they're going to be new to Platypod, and they're going to be new to the Platypod gear and some of the extra uh, products and offerings that you have, and they're going to go, what is that? How does that work? And we can't go into all the detail of all the products in this hour. So going to the Platypod YouTube channel is a great place to go, because no matter which article, which item we're talking about, maybe it's a, a phone holder like this, or uh, the elbow like this, or this particular platypod, or a different model of platypod, whatever you might have a question about, well, those questions are answered in different videos on the YouTube channel. Sorry for interrupting, and I know you've no. got an awesome PowerPoint slideshow that we're stepping into now. And, and by the way, now, thank you, Larry. And now that you've mentioned it, let's just show people what is a platypod. For those of you who don't know, yeah. this is called the Platypod Extreme. It's about the size of an iPad mini. It will hold your camera ball head. It will hold lighting equipment. We'll show you some of the things that you can do with this. This is our smaller model, the Platypod Ultra. But I want to get away from the infomercial and get into more teaching. So we're going to dive in now to a, uh, to a very brief uh, PowerPoint presentation. And normally I show a whole bunch of pictures on PowerPoint, but honestly, I ha we have so much to unpack and discuss it with our technology uh, that we're going to go through this a little bit more quickly. So first of all, for those of you just joining us now, Welcome to the Platypod section of the iPhone Photography Conference 2023, and I want to thank Scott Kelby and everybody at the Kelby One organization for having us down here. So again, our topic today is remote iPhone photography with Platypod, and if you have no idea what that means, you will by the end of this discussion, so stick around. Uh, first, I'm going to show a photo from Rick Salmon showing how Platypod can be very well used for macro photography. He has this beautiful orchid, and the Platypod not only supports his iPhone on a Platyball, uh, a, a Platyball uh, tripod head, the iPhone is also being held by something called a square jellyfish, and we'll show you that a little bit later, uh, to hold the iPhone. There are several iPhone holders that have tripod sockets that you could use with this setup. And we also show some goosenecks mounted with this and an elbow mounted with this so that you can support continuous lights. And Rick here is using the LumaCube Panel Pro light on the left. We'll show that in a little bit. And also a LumaCube 2.0 cube light on the right. And again, we'll get into that in a little bit more. And together with Susan Salmon, Rick 
likes to go out to the uh, to the Croton Dam, and it's really beautiful if you've ever been up in Westchester. This is absolutely breathtaking. And here's a beautiful image that Susan took of the Croton Dam spillway. Now, if you look at the behind-the-scenes shot on the right, you can see that Susan has a platypod extreme strapped onto the railing overlooking the spillway. And if you notice the water in the background on that behind the scenes shot, you'll see the water's kind of frozen in place. And that's nice, but not as interesting and beautiful as the flowing water. And Susan did this image by using the uh, burst mode technique and combining several images into what's tantamount to a long exposure. And having this on a steady pedestal, such as the platypod, you really get the stability to get a beautiful, sharp image because you want the flowing things to be blurred out, but you want things that are supposed to be sharp to be nice and sharp, and she's got all that in this image. The next image from my friend and chief uh, marketing officer of Platypod, Skip Cohen. Uh, Skip is showing how he used a Platypod to do a self-portrait uh, together with one of his favorite wines. Hitting the bottle again here, Skip. <laughs> but, <laughs> just kidding. And Skip on his, uh, on his um, web blog called Skip Cohen University, uh, likes to do every once in a while a throwback Thursday. And this is a great market, marketing tool for you guys to use for your, if you are doing professional portraiture, send to your customers because it may get them to do some nice headshots and other, uh, uh, other types of uh, family portraiture and things like that. So Skip did his own throwback Thursday, uh, him again hitting the bottle at about age <laughs> two uh, with, I guess, different substance in that bottle. <laughs> Next, I think if you saw Dave Williams' presentation, you saw this image and how he was able to fire off a pro photo flash in the back room while taking this gorgeous image of Dave Williams lit by window light. And we'll talk about what to do if you don't have window light like this to be able to get a beautiful portrait with your iPhone using Studio Flash in just a little bit. This image taken, now the last image, I'm sorry, was, was, a, uh, was a portrait of Russell Brown. Russell Preston Brown is one of the original Adobe evangelists uh, teaching Adobe. I think Russell told me he was employee number 38 out of now 38,000 over at Adobe. Well, Russell went to visit Dave Williams in Norway. And by the way, those of you who want to learn Aurora photography, sign up for next year's classes that are going to be given by and workshops that are going to be given by Dave Williams in Nor Norway. And uh, you can find out some more information on that by just looking up Dave Williams photography online. Anyhow, Russell and Dave went to do a photo shoot. They hired a model. And this was done near Lofoten, Norway, uh, with this model in front of uh, a little, uh, I, I'm assuming it's a fishing hut. And this was lit also with a flash unit using a pro photo flash. The image on the left is actually a multiple exposure because they removed the flash, which was on a light stand. But if you look at the next slide, you'll see a little video showing how this was done. There you go. Notice the reflections, how Russell's getting low to the ground to get a reflection off the water here. And then look back to the left and you'll see how much of an impact that makes. And then they took out the, uh, the, the flash with the, uh, with the tripod stand later on. But using a platypod for this image, they were able to get right near the water where you catch your best reflection. This is an image by Riley Arthur. Now, Riley is a National Geographic photographer, explorer. Her book, iPhone Photojournalism Techniques, was uh, published 
two years ago on is available on Amazon and goes into a nice overview of how to get into iPhone photography in a photojournalism style. And I would recommend looking into picking up uh, this book on Amazon. Here, Riley has a slice. Actually, she took two slices so that she could catch from different angles of a blood orange. And this is placed on a white background, lit overhead with a, looks like a, a box light that she had there. But that wasn't quite enough to give it more texture, a little bit of highlights and zing. She also lit it up from the front with a LumaCube Panel Pro on a Platypod Ultra with a square jellyfish mounted on that holding her iPhone. Yes, this image was taken with an iPhone. I think by now all of you are convinced that iPhones can be used for professional style photography. And Riley does the same here, taking the image of this, of this flower close up. And she's got a macro lens on her iPhone to get this up real close. Now, I think this was probably an iPhone 12. I think with the newer iPhones, you probably don't even need the macro lens. And there's an image of her book cover in the lower center. If you guys want to get a screen grab of that, again, it's called iPhone Photojournalism Techniques by Riley Arthur. Well, that ends the slideshow portion of our presentation. And I really want to now move forward and talk a little bit more about Platypod, about equipment, and about, well, what can you do with it, and how do you apply this to remote photography? So what, what are the several applications that uh, a Platypod and an iPhone uh, can help you with? Well, first of all, it's great for night exposures. Yes, there's a night exposure mode. You can take up to one second images, but if you want that image to be really sharp, you need a stable surface, and Platypod certainly provides that. Getting down low angles, we just showed you how to catch water reflections, but for many different images that you're gonna to wanna to take, shooting low makes everything that you're shooting look that much bold, bolder and greater and more impressive. So consider whenever you're shooting, I think my friend Rick Salmon says, use your, use your camera, in this case your iPhone, like a helicopter or a drone. Go up, go down, go around your object, view it from different angles, and you'll catch your best images. Vlogging. An iPhone is wonderful as a vlogging tool. The Platypod system helps you by enabling you to mount the iPhone on your Platypod, and you can also add lights, monitors, microphones. I'm going to show you again in our Later on uh, in our Kickstarter pre, uh, sneak peek, what other tool we're going to have that will help you with this kind of a function. Panoramics. Now, I've done pano shots with my iPhone where I'm just trying to hold it and pano across. And I get it right about 30%, maybe 50% of the time. And so many times I get an error message saying that it didn't you know, it didn't quite go right, or you get zigzaggy things on it. If you really want to get a great pano shot, put this on a tripod and use a ball head with a panoramic head on it. And if you happen to have a platyball, I'm not sure you'd buy a platyball just for this, but if you happen to have a platyball that you use for your general photography, you mount a phone, and here's a square jellyfish holder. You mount a phone on here and we're going to use one of Platypod Arca compatible discs. Now you get one of these included with a Platyball. And let me hold this up here. And now when you do a pano, this has just a beautiful amount of resistance to get the pano going beautifully across. Plus the Platyball comes with an included leveling indicator so that you know that your pano is nice and level all the way across. Really great tool for, for panoramic photography. Video, I think Larry mentioned, and again, we mentioned the tools that can help you with your video, such as microphones and continuous lights to get better, brighter, more contrasted images and with better color too when you have good lighting. Here's where 
the system together with the iPhone is essential for macro photography, product photography, food. Lots of people are doing toy photography. And if you'll sign up on our uh, Facebook user group, the Platypod official Facebook user group, just go to our homepage. You'll see a little fly out on the right hand side shows you how to how to sign up for that. You'll find a lot of toy photographers who are doing amazing things. You can really learn a lot about photography by shooting images of toys. Platypod and the iPhone get you into really tight spaces. You want to put this in a refrigerator or in, a, in an oven, turn the oven off, please, to get an image of taking a pie out of the oven. These are great tools to do that with. We'll talk again about self-portraiture using the Apple Watch. Larry's going to discuss that in a minute. Time-lapse photography, essential. I'll show you in a little bit how you can strap your iPhone using a platypod onto a tree, a pole, a railing, and leave it up there high so children don't bother it and no one's going to touch your phone and you'll get a really great time lapse because it's got to stay up there for a while to get a, two, a good time lapse. Also, how many things in photography do you literally use every single day? I use my platypod every day because I start the day with a good breakfast as, as a physician. I recommend that highly. A good day starts with a good breakfast. And Simply, I mount my iPhone onto the platypod, and I can scroll through my emails with my other hand without having to hold, without having to hold the phone. And that works great. It's also very good for FaceTiming with my grandkids or your children, whatever the case may be. And uh, last but not least. When you're doing professional shoots or you're teaching or you're vlogging, you might want to get some behind the, sh the scenes footage. And again, put this up on a shelf or a cabinet, a table, a pole, and it's a great place to mount a camera, in this case the iPhone, uh, sort of discriminately or, or, or uh, in a hidden way or quietly taking those BTS shots and you'll have some very usable footage there. Larry, I've, I've talked enough for a little bit. I'm going to hand this back to you to discuss the Apple Watch, and I'm going to try to do some of the things you're talking about uh, with my Apple Watch, and uh, maybe uh, people can see what I'm doing while they're seeing what you're doing. Sure thing. Dr. T, thank you so much for, uh, for all the stuff that emphasizes what you can do with an iPhone for iPhone photography. I mean, people are starting to realize it is a professional camera for pro shooters if you want it to be. It can be a snapshot camera too, but you can do some amazing things. And one of the things that Dr. T was pointing out is with a setup like what he was showing you and, and something like this, you can put something like this in the corner of a kitchen and do real estate photography and put your iPhone camera in a place that uh, a traditional tripod won't even fit. And so when you think about all these different places, all these different ways that you can take great pictures by getting your camera, and in this case your iPhone camera, into a position that it wouldn't normally be, we all think about, oh, I'm going to take an iPhone picture. You pull the iPhone out, you hold it in front of your face, and you take that picture. But one of the things I learned from Scott Kelby, I'm talking years and years and years ago, he said, you wanna take good pictures of flowers as we were walking through this uh, theme park over in Orlando. He said, don't stand up and take pictures of the flowers. He said, get down low and shoot across. Shoot at the same level as that, that whole garden bed that you're taking a picture of. And it, it made so much better pictures. And those are the kinds of insights that really help. Now, as you get your iPhone mounted on a platypod, you're thinking, okay, well, I want to get it really low or I want to, in, the, in one of the uh, examples Dr. T was showing, there was a macro shot of a camera close to a flower with a bee buzzing around that flower. Well, what you can do is set up something like this and put it in a garden and then step back, step away, and you can remote control your camera from your Apple Watch. A lot of people know you can do that. So let me run through a list of things that you probably don't know all of them, 
that your Apple Watch can do to help you control your camera remotely and some tips and tricks for getting even better pictures out of it. And I'll run through this in a, a pretty quick order. One of the first things though that I want to point out is your Apple Watch has all those applications on it. And people are used to, yeah, you press the crown in and you get the list of all your uh, applications on there. You don't have to mess with that. If you create a, an Apple Watch face that has one of the complications that is the camera, and I have that on my watch face, so I just bring up my watch face and I just touch, and it launches into the camera. Now my phone was turned off just now when I did this, but when you launch the camera app on your iPhone, it's the remote control camera app on your iPhone, it turns on your iPhone's camera, and it's ready to roll, because it says, hey, you want to take pictures, that's what it's going to do. So it turns on your iPhone's camera. Now by default, it's got a little circle at the bottom center that has a three in it, and there are little three little dots off to the right. That three is a countdown timer. So on your watch face, you now have a preview of what your camera is seeing, and you have that little three there. And when you touch the three, it's a three second countdown timer before it takes the picture. So a lot of people know that. But what a lot of people don't realize is you can touch those three little dots and you get tons more controls. Specifically, you can switch from the front camera to the rear facing camera on your iPhone. You can turn the flash on or turn it off or just leave it in auto mode. You can turn off that three second timer. Sometimes you want the three second timer. Most of the time when people are taking pictures from their iPhone, controlled from their Apple Watch, they're taking selfies. And your selfies don't look good if it's just a picture of you holding your arm up and looking at your wrist. The better selfies are going to be with your hands down in a normal position. So not a good selfie and that's a better selfie. So what you want to do is get the picture all lined up, make sure everything looks good, touch that three button, and then it'll count down three, two, one, and take the picture. Great way to work. Uh, another thing that you can do with that little three dots area, in the controls in there, you have the ability to turn on live photo mode or not. Now, I'm sure almost everybody knows live photo mode on the iPhone is the camera taking a mini video. It captures audio and video, but it plays back by default as a single frame. And then later on, you can do other things with that. You can save it as a little video clip. You can watch it back as a video clip by when you're looking at it on your phone. You touch and hold, and it plays that one second, second and a half video, uh, mini video with sound. So you can do something like that. So that's live. Larry, can I just can I can I just show that for a yeah, second in, yeah, in right case ahead. people don't understand? So. Uh, if you have my image here, so what Larry's saying is, is just take this button down here, instead of just tapping it and taking an image, hold and press it, and it's, you actually see the video timer at the top there coming in, and you're shooting video till you release. Let that go, then the video stops. Very cool, Larry. And I never knew that till you showed me that just the other day. That's really amazing. Yeah, Larry T, that's not what I was talking about at all. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what I was talking about is live <laughs> photo mode in the camera, in the still camera. Okay. So, so there's live photo mode, and the last thing you can touch in that three dot area is HDR. You can turn HDR on and off. Now, what Larry T revealed was my next point, which ah, is- Sorry, it's that's, No, no, it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> it, and, and this is important, because when you touch those three dots, you think, oh, well this is where I get all the controls on my Apple Watch as a remote control for my camera, and so I must be able to turn on video from here remotely, and you cannot, and that's what's hidden. And so when you're in the still camera mode on your iPhone, and your Apple Watch is your remote for your still camera, that's where you hold down the button, the photography still shooting button, and it turns your camera into 
a video camera, and that's what Larry T was. That's uh, I guess that's what now. I just did. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. No, sorry, it's all good. Sorry for the confusion. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> now, launching the camera remote is going to give you the chance to open up the camera app remotely. So I started off this whole session by saying my phone was off. I launched the camera app, remote control app on my phone or on my watch. And as soon as I did that, immediately it turned on the phone and it turns on the camera in whatever mode it was in last. And whichever camera, whether it's the uh, front facing camera or not, that's what comes up. Now, here are a couple more things that people miss when they're thinking about using their Apple Watch as a remote control. Uh, the photo trigger turns on the video mode. You can zoom. A lot of us didn't know you can zoom. I just discovered this fairly recently myself. You can zoom. Now, let me point something out. <clears throat> on your phone, you have multiple cameras. I have a 13 Pro. So I have multiple camera lenses pointing away from me, and I have one camera lens pointing at me. The selfie camera for FaceTime videos and things like that, that is a single lens. So you cannot zoom with that camera. You can't zoom in. If you try and zoom, you can zoom out just a little bit, but that's it. And it's only a digital zoom. It's not zooming uh, in at all. But these cameras on the other side of my iPhone, these three lenses mean that I can zoom. And a lot of you already know that. You're taking pictures with your iPhone and you can zoom with that iPhone camera built into your iPhone. But from the remote control on your Apple Watch, when you're using that, just turn the dial, that crown dial, and that allows you to actually zoom in on these cameras. So you can zoom Larry, in pretty Larry, far. Larry, can, can I just say, this just blew me away last week when you showed me this the first yeah. time because I used to be running back and forth to the camera to change views and change, and you showed me this, and just to, to show what you were saying, just how, how do you do this? By moving the crown, right? Yeah, yeah, just turning the dial on that crown. Just turn the dial and you zoom out. See, now I'm, I'm close, oh gosh, I'm looking right at my microphone here, and then I just pull down and it zooms, it zooms right back. And you can do this all from you know 10 feet away, it's amazing. That that's a that was just a great trip, a great tip. Thank yeah, you, Larry. Yeah, it works great. And one of the really cool things is think about what we were talking about before. Take a setup like this and put it in a garden near some flowers where you see butterflies or bees all buzzing around and doing the pollen thing. And you're like, I really want to zoom in. You can now. Here's something else that a lot of people don't know about. You know how on your camera that's built into your phone. When you're focused on something, if you touch a spot in the view on your iPhone, it sets the exposure and the focus on that particular thing, on that particular item. So just like this, I, I want to touch, I want to get my face in focus. So I'll touch here right on my face. Now my face is focused and now I can just take the picture. Exactly. Right so you can do Great. that. You can do that as we're used to doing it, we can do it on the phone, but now you can also do it on your Apple Watch. It's a fantastic additional option. Um, two more quick tips and then we got to move on. Uh, the first one is <laughs> if you've ever set your phone down somewhere, you're outside doing something, you're in a big grassy field, you set your phone down or whatever, it's in the back of your car and you don't remember where you set it down. Well, swipe up from the bottom on your Apple Watch and you'll see a little picture, a little graphic that looks like an Apple Watch with a couple of uh, sound waves on the side of it. And if you touch that. So you have to go back at Larry, just to clarify, you have to go back to the to your main watch right. screen. Yeah, you can't be. Then we be, swipe up. Yeah, you can't be in the remote control app. You have to go back to and your then, main screen and swipe at up. At the top here, I've got an image of my, a little icon of my phone. Yep. And you hear that? Yeah. And this happened just uh, two days ago at my house. My wife was like, where did I put my phone? I said, you have your Apple Watch, right? And she said, yeah. And I said, swipe up and touch that spot. And what's really awesome right now, Larry T, is other people that are watching this, 
that are in the Kelby One studios right now are trying this trick. I can hear <laughs> down the hall. Larry, I think you just cost a lot of people a lot of money because they're heading over to their Apple stores tonight before the malls close. And I think they're going to want to pick up an Apple Watch. Yeah, no this kidding. is unbelievable. This is great stuff. Okay, one last thing. Um, I've been into video and video cameras and things like that for years. Here's what I know. I know this camera that faces me is not nearly as good as these cameras that are facing away from me. And what I'm used to is when I'm filming with a camera, not the iPhone, but if I'm filming with a camera, I'm used to being able to see what's going on with that camera. And I also know that if I'm doing selfie, I'm gonna get the lowest quality because that's the lowest quality camera. Wouldn't it be really cool if I could set up my camera like this and have a visual here of what these cameras are seeing. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. What you do is set up your watch like this. And Dr. T, you can potentially show this a little better than I can here in the studio. But I just set up my watch like this. And I gotta put in the code again. Okay, there we go. All right, so there it is. And you actually have this monitor is displaying what these camera lenses see all at once. So I can so, hold it like this. I can do the selfie stuff like this and see. So Larry, being the, being the platypod maniac, I mean, my kids are Lego maniacs, but being the platypod maniac that I am, I'll show you the platypod variation on your theme. Oh yeah. And that is, I've taken a platypod ultra, I attached a platypod elbow to it with a platypod clamp. How do you like about keeping all this in the family? Uh -huh. And now I've got the watch over there as a monitor for exactly what's going on my phone. And you guys are seeing, you're seeing my studio now, <laughs> okay, my basement studio. And you can see everything that's going on here. So this is, yeah, it's, it's great. You could wrap it around the phone or if you want to do it my way, you could. But it doesn't matter as long as you get the images that you want to get. Larry, that was just amazing. You know, it is, Thank you. it is so much fun using your Apple Watch as a remote. I didn't think I'd be using it nearly as much as I do. But now that I know all these cool things that it does, I'm able to do those, those distant photos. I can set the camera down, I can set the iPhone down at a distance and control it more than I thought I could from my Apple Watch. Dr. T, you have a way of doing photography with traditional cameras, but using your iPhone as the remote control and the remote viewing screen. Right, so we're gonna we're gonna move over to that, Larry. Thank you for a wonderful. I, I'll tell you, you could we could put this out as a video just on on how to use the uh, Apple Watch. I think you guys have gained a lot of amazing tips and tricks right there. So, Larry, thank you for that presentation. I'm going to move over to something very different. It's not really iPhone photography, but it's using your iPhone for your DSLR or mirrorless camera photography. So, And this is something that I do on a regular basis for myself, both in product photography, when I want to share images with my editor, with my marketing people, or if I'm doing what I call photo booth photography. We'll talk about that a little bit. Let's say you're at a wedding or a bar mitzvah or a party, and you want to be able to be firing off studio quality <laughs> portraits with studio lighting and everything from your DSLR, but you want those pictures immediately to go into your iPhone. Now, many cameras have a uh, built-in function where they will wirelessly transmit images to your phone. My problem is they hardly ever work. And I was looking for a much more reliable solution. And I've used in the past uh, something called Cam Ranger. It's a good product. I found something else that I like even better. And I picked this up on a Kickstarter myself. And it's a tool called the Arsenal 2 Pro. And if you want to find this right now, they're on back order. They should be available the end of April. But if you want to find this, you go to www.witharsenal.com. 
www.withrsenal.com, and you'll find this. Uh, the price, I think, is reasonable uh, on it, and it does a whole lot of things. But let's talk about how you can use it for what I call wireless tethered shooting. Now, if you know anything about tethered shooting photography, where you take your DSLR information uh, through a USB cable, plug it into your laptop, you can then plug it into Lightroom and process images. This is something that you can do very easily, very portably, just using your iPhone or even an iPad to do. So let's go through how this works. I'm going to just bring up my iPhone. I hope you can see the entire screen there. Does that is that coming through to the guys in the studio? Looks like it. Oh, now you changed. Oh, oh okay. And yeah, we've got the phone back up. Okay. I go into the software for Arsenal 2. First, I'm going to turn on the Arsenal on top. You just press a button and you'll see some pretty lights will come up in the back. Make sure you're camera is on then we're going to act we're going to activate if you look i'm going to activate the arsenal whoop, the arsenal connect program i press connect to join into the system and this works really well anything like this can have an occasional glitch but i've been able to shoot for hours without without problems with this okay now you see the studio now you get to see my lovely face here, and we'll position that up. Okay, so what can you what can you do with this? Uh, first, I'll show what they call smart mode, and uh, this makes it very very easy. It's like an auto program mode. To focus, I tap on my face on the screen. You see a yellow box over there focusing. Look in the camera. I hit the white button at the bottom, and I've got an image. And just checking, perfectly focused, okay? And very nicely exposed. The smart mode on here is amazing. It'll choose all your settings for you. And that's really what Arsenal was originally pitching as a smart photographer's assistant. Personally, I tend to shoot more on manual. There's a fully manual mode. You can choose aperture priority, program, shutter priority, or 100% manual and you can change all the settings from uh, from uh, exposure value settings uh, shutter speed f-stop iso everything is available on here they also have i'm not going to get into this too much right now but they also have several other modes including an interval timer uh, they have focus stacking they've got uh, oh goodness uh, exposure stacking that you can do on this and again, that's kind of outside the scope of this talk, but an amazing tool. And the, the thing I like to do with this when I'm in a uh, doing a photo booth is I can hit the little icon in the lower left corner here and immediately take that image, either airdrop it to someone, and airdrop's a great way to use it, uh, or I can email it out, or I can uh, send it out as a text message. Uh, the most recent time I did this was a recent holiday here, our Purim holiday, and I had people coming over to my house and studio asking uh, you know, to have pic portraits taken of their family. I had a whole portrait studio set up. I may show that a little bit later on for those of you to stay, stay to the end. And what I love about AirDrop, and Larry, you're the one who taught me this trick several years ago. Uh, what I really love about AirDrop is that if you swipe down from the upper right corner, and I I hope you can see the swipe down where you get all your controls. Then in the upper left, I'm on airplane mode now, you can see there's four uh, dots. There's one for Wi-Fi, airplane mode, Bluetooth. If you press the space, yes, the space in between those four dots, press it hard, you'll then bring up another screen. At the bottom of it is AirDrop, and you just hit that, and you tell your clients to just go everyone for 10 minutes, and you'll be able to immediately airdrop that photo to them effortlessly. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that, that little tip. Arsenal Pro 2. Larry, any questions about the Arsenal? 
Uh, not yet. We are, it up? we are getting some really nice questions coming in from the audience about some of the things that we've talked about already, and we will address those questions closer to the end of this presentation. We got about okay. about 20 minutes of uh, airtime left, Dr. T. Uh, we still <laughs> we have plenty plenty and 20 to talk about. So let's keep uh, then let's keep moving uh, uh, ahead. Then uh, we'll we'll delete the Arsenal program there and come back in here. All right. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about strobe lighting, and uh, we'll just go into this briefly. I know Dave Williams uh, talked about it a little bit today, too, and I want to thank the people at Profoto for providing us with their strobes. This is a Profoto B10X light. This is a professional quality uh, studio probe. Uh, Dave showed in his presentation a smaller one. I'll show that one too. But I wanted to show how this combines with Platypod to give you a very good background light, which you can put behind your model to light up the background just by just putting it on a Platypod. And the way this is assembled is simply you take one of our spigot adapters, our three inch spigot adapters, and this then screws onto the bolt on the Platypod Extreme. And I would recommend the Extreme for this purpose because it's a much, much broader platform for a heavy item like this. And then the studio mono lights will come with a connector like this. It's a universal stand. This will go on a light stand as well, but it mounts right onto here. You then just tighten that and you can angle and position the light. Now, Here's where this comes in. Very interesting for iPhone users because Profoto is one of the only brands, there's very few that have this feature that is Bluetooth enabled. I'm simply going to turn this on and wait till that's powered up. Okay, that's powered up and I can set the power on this. It also happens to have a very bright modeling light that you can see there. We're going to turn that off for right now. And then let's bring up the uh, software again. Uh, hopefully you can see my iPhone again. Please tell me if there's any problems seeing that. No, it's all good. And let's go to Pro Photo Camera. <clears throat> I'll turn the camera around here. Okay, so you can see me. Now, I just hit Connect Device. And it's finding the B10X. Connect it. I'll skip the registration for now. And now I can simply trigger that strobe. I have the strobe here next to me. Okay, there, we'll, we'll hold it up at a nice angle. And fire away. If you, saw, if you heard there were a few little clicks in there, it actually does some pre-flashes to let you set the uh, the uh, exposure uh, automatically, actually. And then, again, you can use this setup very nicely as a background light. I also like to use a setup like this to place on the floor behind a bride to light up the rim of her dress. Uh, this is the old Monty Zucker technique uh, used in uh, wedding photography. Light up the rim of the dress. But the beauty of this is no light stands, no wires, and you can fire this from your iPhone. Dr. T, uh, to show you another re really quick, really quick question. Yes. It looks like a different camera application on your iPhone. So that's not yes. the built in iPhone camera. It's the one that's Profoto. Is that correct? That is true. It's Profoto's app. It is a, a fairly robust app. Uh, you also have, I'm using it here on smart mode just for you know, for time saving sake, but they also have what they call classic mode, which allows you to set all kinds of settings, including ISO, shutter speed. I turn, oh, I turned off that flash. Okay, but we'll, uh, we'll show you that. We'll show you that in a second in another, in, in, with another flash. You can set, set color temperature. So all the different settings are available. Uh, let's bring that to the, to the next flash that I'm going to show. And this is the Pro Photo. Uh, what's the model here? A, A10, A10 Air. This is a smaller flash. This can be used 
on camera and it can trigger several flashes. But I'm showing this because of another another uh, type of uh, lighting that I like to do using a shoot-through umbrella, which you can use shoot-through or as a reflective umbrella. I'm going to turn on that flash and connect the device with the app. You can tell me if you're having any problem seeing that. And now you open this umbrella and you've got basically a portrait studio in a very, very tiny little space. Power up the flash, and it's now connected by Bluetooth. Let me, here it says connected already, and I can fire this off for portraiture. Just, whoops. Hang on one second. And just like that. Okay. Uh, I don't think it fired that time, but I just have to play play around with that. Um, Larry, any comment about that? You know, I, I don't think it, it really has hit home with me. Uh, just a couple years ago, one of the strongest reasons that photographers, professional photographers, were sneering at iPhones is because of the little tiny flash and how little control we had on an external flash. And true photographers, a lot of pro photographers I know, just know the art of using an external flash. And that hasn't been available, but now it is for iPhones. It's just an amazing time for me to, uh, to have that experience of being able to control a legit studio external flash from an iPhone. Oh, there we got it going now, nicely. One thing I forgot to mention, Larry, uh, was just uh, how this is mounted. You use something called an umbrella mount. Let me, uh, let me hold that up here. Yeah. This is an umbrella mount. So you can mount this to a Platypod Ultra if you like to, uh, just using this $25 attachment, and that allows you to pull an umbrella into that as well. Uh, these are available at b and and other fine camera stores. So we're going to put that one, one away. And just quickly, I want to show you, excuse me, one other, one other setup that I like to do, and that is for background lighting when you're out in the field and you want to use a, a, a hair light behind your subjects. This is great for en engagement photos out in the forest or something, and you don't want to have a light stand uh, in, the, uh, in the image. So we'll take something like this, put it behind the bride and groom, and be able to light that. And I have this strapped onto a pole using a Platypod Ultra. I also have a second uh, Platypod Ultra here, which perhaps we can we can show for a second. Uh, hang on one second. I want to get a little bit more light on this because I know it's a little, it's a little dark in the room here. Just give me one. Yeah, moment. and while while everybody's looking at that black pole that Larry T has in there the studio, go. you you should be thinking, well, out in a park, it could be a tree. This could be a telephone pole. You can strap onto a park bench. Just all kinds of different opportunities like that. So. Again, what you what you can do with this is you just strap a Platypod Ultra onto a tree, and I've shown in other in other of our talks exactly how to do that. But just briefly, you can put a iPhone holder such as a square jellyfish right over here and place your iPhone and get time lapse BTS shots. So that's the setup that I would use either in portrait mode or in landscape mode, it just works beautifully. All right, any, uh, any questions on that, Larry? I'm sure we'll have some coming up. I have uh, a couple of questions in the, in the queue that we're gonna be asking of you shortly as okay. we step into our final segment of this. We've got, looks like about six and a half minutes available. In oh the hour. boy, I better talk, I better talk fast then. Okay, <laughs> next thing, we talked about doing macro photography, food photography, um, 
any kind of close-up photography, here's the setup that I use for that. And let me just bring overhead here. Okay. And I like to use the LumaCube system because it gives me a lot of control. I'm going to bring up the uh, LumaCube app. Hang on one second here. I think you can see my, my phone now. Yeah. So tap on LumaCube. And I have two LumaCubes activated here. LC4 is a small LumaCube 2.0. And if you can see, LumaCube is on. And I can make it brighter, dimmer, right from the app here. And then the Panel Pro gives me a lot more capability, a lot more functionality, and a lot softer light, too. So let's turn that on. And there we go. You can see that. So now I can control not only brightness, but I can also control color temperature. So I can go from an amber color temperature to a daylight one. So regulate from tung tungsten to bright daylight. I can do different colors for special effects. I've got red. I've got green. I've got blue. And with using the color wheel, any color in between. So highly functional, great for product photography, food, toys, macro. This is, these are amazing tools, and it all works great with the Platypod system. Let me turn down those lights so they don't glare everybody's eyes, because I've got these mounted with an elbow and a gooseneck, which gives me amazing amount of control and positioning ability with this. Point the camera down using my Platyball there, and do this too. And of course, you can do all this with the iPhone as well. So this is a great, great tool uh, to use with your iPhone. Okay, Kickstarter, April 26th. Please join us. That Kickstarter will, will run until the end of May, and we're looking for as many supporters as possible for our new object. Ooh. No one has seen this yet. You guys are seeing this for the very first time. This is the Platypod handle. And what this does is this will mount on a platypod or any tripod via a 3 8 inch socket, or you can mount it onto any ball head using an Arca base that's here. And it will give you a riser here that works as a handle if you're vlogging and walking around with it to hold your camera equipment. Uh, it also has eight points at the top so that you can mount elbows, goosenecks, lights, uh, microphones, monitors, gosh, just about anything you can think of. It goes from six and a half inches up to 10 and a half inches. It even breaks down into a three inch riser if you wanna go lower than that. And you'll be hearing a lot more about this tool in the near future. Please, April 26, join us on the grid, and you'll be able to participate with that. And just to give you an idea of how I use this tool in a photo booth, you take a look at this image. I've got my iPad, the Arsenal 2, a battery pack, a uh, <laughs> my camera. Everything here is supported right on top of my tripod using the Platypod handle. And I was able to get some lovely family portrait. Oh my goodness, look at this family over here. Somewhat dysfunctional, <laughs> but okay, that, that's all right. And I want to thank you all again for joining us here. And please go to our website, sign up for our Platypod Ecosystem on the Horizon newsletter that comes out once a month. Three great articles from different photographers. You'll get lots of ideas. And also please sign up for the Platypod official users group on Facebook. And if you go to the main, our main homepage on the website, you'll see a fly out on the right side to take you over to Facebook and let you sign up for that. And thank you all for joining me. Larry, I 
If they'll give us another minute or two, we can answer some questions. Yeah, while you were while you were wrapping up, I was here in the studio talking to him going, we just need to go five minutes over so I can respectfully answer the questions that did come in. So I'm going to speed through these, Dr. T, uh, and, and answer as many of these questions as quickly as possible. Uh, Betty McShane sent in a question that says, how do you get the camera face of the watch on, to, or how do you get the Let's see, the camera on the face of the watch. Okay, so from the session that I was teaching where your watch is your remote control for the camera, it's called a complication. And what you do is you go into your iPhone, the Apple Watch app on your iPhone. You can pick all the, the faces. And among the faces you can pick, there are just tons of different Apple Watch faces that you can choose. And there's ones with portraits and things like that. Well, you can pick one of the faces and add complications to it. And one of the complications, one of the little trigger options is you can do like weather and I've got, uh, what's the outside temperature? I've got messages on mine. And one of the things I have is the camera. So when you're in the Apple Watch app on your iPhone, creating a new face and adding complications, and not, not all faces allow complications, but many of them do. So I just picked a watch face that allows me to have additional complications, and one of those complications is called camera remote. And so that's what I use. And so this is, I, I, you probably can't see it, that's my Apple watch face that has my camera remote complication, and so I just touch on that. It launches my camera app, and my camera is now running. And you can kind of see what's going on in the studio. And Larry, alternatively, if someone doesn't have it set up as a complication, yeah. I, I, I personally don't because I have too many other things that I need on my complications. Uh, I just go into, I press the crown on the side, yeah. I get my list of, uh, of apps, and I just hit camera remote there. Yeah. But, oh, and it is bringing up the camera immediately. Look at that. It's that's working too. So that's an alternative way if you don't have it set up as a complication. But I think if you're going to do a lot of this function, it's great to have that set up. And again, uh, these complications Larry's talking about are just these little points around here. For yeah. example, I have a calculator set up. You can put that on there, but uh, all right, outside of the scope of this talk. <laughs> this right. And, Any other and, questions well, that we can answer? Yeah, there are other questions. But one of the one of the things about the complications, I have multiple watch faces, and I just swipe to go to different watch faces. And so when I know I'm gonna be doing photography, I swipe over to the watch face that I've created with that complication. Next question Great is, idea. what is the mount Larry is using with the Platypod? Well, I have a Platypod, okay? And this mount, this thing that you see is, it's like a magic arm and it's called the elbow and it is from Platypod. And what's really cool about it, when you loosen it, it can kind of go flopping around in any direction at all, but with a single twist uh, control, when I tighten that down, whatever position it's in, it locks all of those pivot points, all of them, so it holds it perfectly still. So just loosen one screw and the whole thing is movable, and then you get it about where you want it and then tighten that screw down, and that is... Right, and on top of that, what do you have on top of that, Larry? Uh, to the hold square, the, actually the, hold the camera? Yep, hold that, the iPhone? That's the square jellyfish phone holder. Thank you for reminding me to mention that. Thanks, Dr. Yeah. T. Okay, uh, next question is, how do you see the iPhone screen connected to the Platypod when it's low, like on the ground? Well, we've kind of talked about that. Um, if you get this really low on the ground or you put it in a garden spot, or like you saw, there was somebody that was putting it really close to uh, the surface of a, a body of water, like a, a mini lake or a pond or something like that. Well, you can get down on your belly if you wanted to, but I don't. I just set this down on the ground as low as I want it to go, and wherever my camera is pointed, my watch face with the camera remote activated shows me on my watch face what the camera is seeing. But Larry, if they don't have the watch, if they don't have the watch, can I just show something here? Yeah. You see that one one interesting thing about how the iPhone was was de was designed was even from a very, very tangential angle, you can still see what's on that screen. It doesn't disappear. So I, I think if you even if you don't have the watch and you're low down to the ground, you're still gonna see what's going on over here, 
even from an off angle. Uh, real quick, Teddy asked this question, and it is such a big question. I'm going to make you answer it, Dr. T. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the question is, I don't have any Platypod products. What do I need for my iPhone? So if it all you're going to do is, is use it for your iPhone, you need a Platypod Ultra, you need a little ball head, and you need a phone holder. We sell this now in the Platypod Ultra Compact Smartphone Bundle. And if you go to platypod.com, click on the top menu where it says Shop, you'll be able to scroll down and you'll find that bundle there. And that bundle includes the discount for uh, for this presentation. I do recommend if you're going to go a little further and use it, this system for a camera to, to go and get it's somewhat more expensive, but it's an amazing buy. It's not that much more expensive when you have this deal because uh, it includes also the uh, Benro ball head. This alone is almost a $60 uh, value here and is absolutely mighty. So I would suggest, you know, for most of you to get that Ultra Essentials bundle. I think you'll be very glad you did. Okay, Dr. T, next question is um, what, let's see. Uh, is there a special version of the Apple Watch that is best for remote shooting? And uh, Lois asked that question. Lois, I, I don't really think there is a best. I think some of the older Apple Watches don't do very well with it, but I just have an SE. I have an Apple Watch SE, uh, so nothing super fancy, nothing super high end. And, and I have a seven, I think, okay. over here, and it works beautiful, perfectly. Yeah. Absolutely perfectly. Uh, okay, why are, does... Are the guys in the control room sweating yet? <laughs> we're way yeah. over. <laughs> yeah, we're way over. Um, let's see. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, that one we've already answered, and we've already answered what is the mount that I'm using. So, that's all the questions. Dr. T, <laughs> we didn't get... If you have we... more questions, by the way, just write to service at platypod.com. We will try to answer all your questions uh, through an email there. And, and we're, we love, you know, we love communicating with our customers. Feel free to, to answer there. Larry? Uh, yeah, that's all I've got. Thank you so much for all this extra stuff. We've taught an awful lot about iPhone photography, tethered shooting, and wireless remote controlled shooting using your uh, Apple Watch. Hopefully you got a little bit out of this, and hopefully you know a little bit more about the best tripod alternative in the world. The best tripod is the one you have with you. And so the Platypod is a great way to go. It's a wonderful experience. It'll help you out a lot with your iPhone photography. Hope you check that out. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for this extra session this evening. Tomorrow, we're going to come back same time, and we're going to start doing the A and B sessions and an awful lot more of the learning about the iPhone photography and all the stuff that goes along with it. Dr. T, and thank, thank you, you Larry. so much. Thank you, all our, thank you, all our supporters and all our Platypod customers and all our friends out there at Kelby One, and especially my wife, Minna, and Skip, and Hilmar, and Shiv, and Dave Williams, and everybody else who has helped us out bringing this product to the world. Thank you. Good night. And sorry to keep you too late, but I hope you had as much fun as we did. That's all I got to. Take care, Larry T.